good. Hello, Sandy. Amy, good morning, good afternoon, somewhere in between. Right, right, right. <laughs> For all of our listeners, they could be listening any time of the day. Any right time now. of the day. Good day, good day. Good day, good day. Um, how are you doing? Good. We got a, another big uh, snowstorm in. So, yeah, yeah. We're right when I think I'm kind of past that point of uh, massive cleanup of dog boots, uh, person and coming back to the house. But, you know, I took a bunch of pictures. It's pretty out and, you know, it's all good. Good. That's great. How about that's you? Awesome. Good. Good. It's a rainy day here today. So that's a little, it's gloomy, but you know, every once in a while, it's not bad. I got my hot tea. It's a good day. And it's podcast day, which always makes it fun because I always get to look forward to these conversations. Um, just to share with the audience, you and I don't talk about these topics prior to this, but we kind of share our ideas on a topic. And then we both go our separate ways, do research, and we come back together. And um, it's always interesting. I always enjoy listening to the things that you've reflected on. And I've got a few things on today. Today, we're talking about forgiveness. And in, in interestingly, Amy, I was thinking, you know, again, back to the listeners as a background, Amy brought this topic up and we keep a little topic board that has like a general summation or where it came from. And I'm thinking we've talked about this before, but then Amy and I always say, well, let's not overthink what we talked about before, because if it's coming up again, and again, both doing our independent research. And as I listen to a podcast that Amy will talk about, um, it totally went down a line that I wasn't expecting. And I had a completely different mindset after listening to Lennon Doyle's podcast than I did before. And there were different stories, instances, things that I had never thought about before. So yeah, I'm very excited to talk about this because uh, uh, I a lot to learn. And frankly, yeah. it's a great podcast. And after listening to it, I'm like, wow, you know, I need to go back and listen again. A complete shift in perspective. And that's exactly when I listened to it. I was like, oh, so it's not really about forgiveness. It's more about reparations, I would say, more about repairing because a lot of time forgiveness is typically on the victim. So when we goof up, we're like, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And it's up to the victim to make everything okay, which actually when the rabbi Rabbi Dania Rutten, hold on. Um, I just want to make sure. And Rutten, she was good. Dania Rutenberg is her name. Um, and she was on We Can Do Hard Things podcast that I enjoy listening to. When it was um, December 26th was, the, was when it dropped. Because I had to go back quite a ways to find it of 2022. Right. Make a how to make wrongs right with Rabbi Dania Ruttenberg, uh, December 26, 2022. We can do hard things with Glennon Doyle. And I found I actually I couldn't get it to play off of Apple and I quickly found it just as easily on Spotify, which is a great thing about podcasts. You can find them on about every place you can find them everywhere. Yeah. So the interesting thing is this flip of not asking for forgiveness. Like it is not like you shouldn't, the first thing you do should not be to ask for forgiveness, to apologize and ask for forgiveness. And that's typically on the, the scheme or the track to actually make things better. That's maybe the very last thing, if it even needs to happen, mm -hmm. it's more about acknowledging what you did and we can go through all of the things, the steps, mm -hmm. Um, but it was very interesting. What, what struck you in the whole conversation? You know, um, probably two things, you know, there are a few stories that as we talk, I'll bring up things that I've read about in the past that I kind of pulled it all together and I wasn't thinking through forgiveness. I, I one big thing is when Glennon really emphasized the fact that forgiveness is a one person 
activity. Okay. It's really the person that is doing the forgiving and too often people, you know, back to, I say, I'm sorry, I accept it, but it really is a soul. I have to, the person that has been wronged, it is really up to them, the forgiveness, whether the other person says it, whether it's authentic, but it's an internal thing that needs to have its forgiveness should be focused there. Just like, uh, the rep the reparations the things that need to happen have to ha happen with the person who did the wrong um and yeah. then the other thing was and i thought i've never thought about this is the rabbi talked about our country has an obsession with forgiveness yeah that, that, that just it's our knee-jerk reaction something bad happens and again i'll, I'll pick no sides something yeah. bad happens and right. right away it's like we need unity let's forgive where you've missed the entire step of what went wrong how do we rectify it? Who needs forgiveness? How do we make sure it doesn't happen again? But we just have this, we're great because guess what? Something bad happened. So we're going to right away go to forgive unity and kind of pretend it never happened. Right. And it's like, let's brush it off. Let's forgive it. Let's move on. And it's one of the things I was reading some of the articles that the rabbi has written on this topic and one thing that she writes um, that I loved was it ties to that. And it's harmed people can heal without forgiving and can give themselves permission not to forgive and to just heal. Sometimes people need to hear that they're allowed not to forgive. And I've never heard that. Like right. I've always heard you have to forgive. It's up to that person, kind of like Glennon said, it's one person, you know, at the end yeah. of the day, the person who was wronged can decide whether to accept the apology or not and how they want to do it when they want to do it. And they yeah. might never want to go back to the, the, the person. They might want to say, I'll take care of this on my own. Yeah. And healing can happen without forgiving. Mm -hmm. Like you can move on you can be okay and you still don't have to forgive the person who did the injustice. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking, I, I've been thinking a lot about this and her steps. And one of the things right before we were getting on the call, I had an email about um, Black History Month and it was something, and I started the, and you know, my mind was on this forgiveness track mm -hmm. and a lot of times people with the whole, um, slaves and they're like, oh, you just need to forgive and move on, move on. And exactly. But that's not what really needs to happen to right. make it better. Like there's, there's, there's has to be number one. The first thing is you have to acknowledge there was a wrong. Mm -hmm. That's the very first step. And um, I'm going to try. And a lot of people can't get past that, which is back to, and I'll, Amy, with the thing that I guess back to your question about what struck me, how often people make apologies and they've never gotten past that first step. They're making excuses. It's not in my character. I wouldn't typically, it has nothing to do with a true apology because they haven't even really accepted that they've done anything wrong, but it's a litany of acceptance that something happened that was wrong to them. That really wasn't their fault. <laughs> right, right, right. Like all the uh, justifications, right. Of, well, I didn't know, or, you know, whatever the justify. Yeah, you're exactly right. They just move on and they don't acknowledge that they did something that offended, that upset, whatever it is, they just don't acknowledge it because they can justify it. So the first step is an expression of regret. Like, I know I did this and um, I know I did this. And then um, acknowledging the responsibility a declaration of repentance as part of it. And some of these steps are, um, I don't know if I'm doing all of her exact steps because I did not write them down when I was listening and you might have more, but there were, there was a series of steps. 
declaration of repentance. So, um, you know, I didn't I write them down, but they're in the show notes. So are they one? Yes. Oh, good. Number nice. One, why should we stop? Exp well, no, they're not the steps. Darn it. Okay. These are what they go through. Okay. I thought I, I was so <laughs> smart. So smart. There's five items, but it's what they're covering. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, but I think the thing is acknowledging it. And then what are you going to do to repair it? That was one of them that caught my attention of not even acknowledging it and expressing your repentance, but it's like, okay, how do I repair this? And a lot of times we just say, I'm sorry, please, you know, please forgive me instead of, okay, here's what I'm going to do to repair this. Right. One of the examples was like, I'd like to make it up to you by taking you out to dinner, or I'd like to come to your open mic night, or I'd like to buy you a new mug to replace the one that I broke, you know, instead of um, just saying, I'm sorry. So one of the early examples she gave, which everybody can resonate to is me too. Yes. And she talked about a couple of people. I don't even know who they are, but a couple of men that I don't know if one ever got to the point of accepting it. The other one said, wow, how can I even call myself a feminist? He later accepted it. But in the beginning they did the made excuses. All guys do it. Not in my character. Look at all these other wonderful things that I've done, all the typical. And even one had to do with a rabbi. That was, uh, she used an example of a rabbi. It wasn't that was had a video camera in the um, sacred bathing place. And his comment was uh, when he was in the trial process, he, he, he saw that he only, com he thought he only committed one crime because he did one thing and how that goes counteractive to saying I did something wrong. You know, he filmed hundreds of women, but he, his mind, those women couldn't forgive him. I'm sure most were to that point because he didn't see each one as a crime. He really made it about him and he did one thing wrong. And so often you hear that with different things and it never resonated with me of the wrong versus the forgiveness and how the two parties, those, the steps in between how those two things come together. But we read about it all the time, right? When something happens, it's like, were they, we might say, were, were they really sorry? That's our typical reaction. Right. It, the answer is probably no. Yeah. And, and if they are, are they sorry they got caught? Are they sorry they're in trouble? Here's a story that's yeah. very timely for me. Here in Durango, um, there's a very popular restaurant and the owners, um, when they were selling their business, they were telling people how to cook the books and they were cooking them pretty good. They were, what they were doing is they were taking all their personal bills, putting them on a credit card and paying the credit card and saying it was for supplies. And then they would tell the people that were trying to buy their business. Oh, you don't have to pay taxes. Just we'll show you how to cook the books. IRS came in tap. I mean, it was just iron the, all on tape. So it's pretty right. public. So they were supposed to have some jail time. And the story in the paper this last week was they did not get jail time. They got probation. And it was because of their history of what they've done for the community and community service. And when I read the article and I have no skin in the game, you know, it's a good restaurant. You know, people say these people did great things for the community. I don't know them. But when I read the article, Amy, I got done. I'm like, you know, I'm not a judgy person. And I'm not usually one of those people. I'm not, a, and, I, and I'm not a judge. So I don't know what they should have gotten, but they only got probation. But it was the words that stayed with me as I read the article. And after hearing this podcast, I thought of this couple, the things that they said in their statements to the judge were, I can't even leave my house because I'm embarrassed. Haven't I gone through enough because of the shame? <laughs> Things I'm a victim. And I'm, I'm a victim. And, and I'm thinking, you know, they're not really, so I couldn't put my finger on it, but it's like, okay, because they really did do a lot for the community, but they really weren't sorry, right? It wasn't, right. they never did the first step of acknowledging, I lied, I cheated, I broke rules, 
I did something wrong and I'm repenting. They're, they're, they're sorry they got caught, right? They're, right. they're humiliated. They're, they wish they wouldn't have done it because it's not worth the humiliation. But is that, is that owning your shit? You know, back to our owning your shit. It's like they never own their shit. Yeah. Yeah. They were, they're just in discomfort right now. So now they feel bad. They did it because they're uncomfortable and they're the victim now and it's painful now. And if this wasn't a white collar crime, if it was rather than a million dollars, if it was $2,000 and it was somebody that didn't have the means or the time to do all or, or to be uh, the community service in a public way, right. they would have been in jail, you know? So right. it, it got me more worked up after I heard this because I'm thinking, you know, I guess it, it, then people think, well, who is harmed? Who are they apologizing to? The taxpayers? I don't know. Maybe maybe that's what makes it a little bit more different is who you don't get as worked up other than thinking there's uh, inequities, the lack of justice between different people. Yeah. And the reparations should be to the community, you know, like right. because they've hurt their community more than because they were respected. They were leaders in the community, I'm sure, volunteers, leaders, and just doing this is hurtful to that. That's a great example. So here, here I'll throw another one out there. Okay. Totally forgot about this. Will Smith wrote a book. It was before <laughs> the slap incident. It was actually a very good book, but he tells a story about an early girlfriend and it wasn't a huge part of the book, but he talked about how, um, you know, he wasn't a celebrity then, how he had done things, not horrible, but typical boyfriend, girlfriend, didn't treat you right. And he said, once he became celebrity, he's tried to reach out to her a couple of times and she's chosen not to answer him. Doesn't say anything bad, but she just kind of like, no, no comment. And he accepted that, which I give him credit for. And it gets back to that. You don't have to talk to the person, you know, I, I were, if I were to guess, I would guess that she has forgiven him, but she is like, I don't, I don't want any part of the spotlight. I don't need to talk to you anymore. I don't know that. And then he's also accepted the fact that she doesn't want to talk to me and I don't expect her to, but I was wrong. It, I, I think it was handled in a way that, um, just like they talked about in the podcast that you don't have to, you don't have to accept, you don't have to put yourself out there and be, do the big unity hug in the end. Right. You can move on and you can heal without forgiving. Um, I was thinking about the things that happen when we don't own up to doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I have family extended family that they are always mad at each other and there's always a rift and you have no idea what is going on, but it's constant hard to keep track of who's right. Mad. Hard. And we, one time we were visiting and we went to visit one side of the family and the other side got completely upset with us that we had gone over there because they weren't speaking at the moment. And it was a little of, all right, so bringing other people into those rifts are not good and making okay. other people part of that, but owning up that first step of owning up and saying you did something wrong can stop all of that. Because if you just say, yeah, you're right. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. I, you are correct. I was wrong because we're all wrong at some time. Like, <laughs> but that keeps it from escalating into more or longer, or, you know, just that, that first acknowledgement. And then you have to work on the repair and stuff, but that that single acknowledgement can go a long way. And sometimes it's not right or wrong. That's the other thing is I think we get tied up in who's right and who's wrong. Sometimes there is that messy middle of you think the other was wrong and you were wronged and it gets back to intent too, right? And, yes. And perception. And, and also sometimes what you said, 
Like the person says, you know, that hurt my feelings. And you're like, why did that hurt hurt your feelings? That's like, that wasn't a big deal. But what you should be saying, oh my, okay, not my intention, but you know, not my intention, not say, but (laughs) cut that one out. (laughs) I'm sorry. I hurt your feelings. Yes. Or not my intention. And I understand how that hurt your feelings because it's listening and respecting how other people take things differently than you do. So what if you don't really understand? So I'll give an example. Before I listened to the podcast, I was thinking about my aunt that said to me, a year after the fact that she, it took her a while to get over me not flying to her daughter's wedding. And I thought, I mean, I, when I got married either, I couldn't even tell you who came, who did. I was happy if they came, but I never kept track of who didn't come. Like I'm not wired that way, but, but now I'm getting to my personality is if it's something I wouldn't get mad about, then I tend to underscore the other person's feelings. Okay. So part of me is like, was I a little cruel by saying, you know what? People didn't come to my wedding. My parents didn't come to my wedding. I told them nobody, whoever came, came. I kind of discounted it. That was my answer. But if I said I understood, I would be lying because I don't understand that mentality. Yeah. But I did feelings are feelings, right? So how should I have answered her, Amy? I can make reparations now. Yeah. Um, I understand that that was important to you because it is about her, not you. Maybe it's more that it's like understanding it's important to her and you know, whatever. And if I would have known that then it might've changed the trajectory of where if I, well, I, I right. wasn't around. It, I, it probably was pretty impossible for me to do, but uh, just because I was on a different trip. But but again, I had no idea that it meant that and, much for her. And if you would have known it meant that much, you would have reached out preemptively and had a conversation. Had a I conversation. Still have gone. Yeah, I, I want to let you know why I can't come. And so it would have been a little bit rather than it, saying rather than saying my knee jerk reaction was well. <laughs> I wouldn't have cared. Why do you care care about that? Why do you care about that? (laughs) Which is, you know. (laughs) Well, good answer. (laughs) Good answer. (laughs) Nailed that one. Um, So uh, I was just thinking, we do tend to get defensive when we don't understand that we did something wrong. You know, a lot, it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't mean that. I like, And then you start to explain why you did something and it feels defensive. So you have to be very careful of not being um, defensive when people call you on doing stuff. Because I really was sorry I hurt her feelings. Right. But uh, it wouldn't have changed. I I didn't need to go into changing the outcome. I was sorry I hurt her feelings. And I totally had, that was not my intent. Yeah. Because I would have had a conversation earlier. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think I always think of this saying, my sister told me way back when, always assume positive intentions. So whenever somebody is offending you or doing something that you're like, oh, this is rubbing me the wrong way, try to flip it, the perspective of what what could they possibly be doing and why could they be doing it if it's not to irritate me? Like there's probably another reason they're doing something. So like your aunt could have looked at you and said, I'm sure Sandy didn't mean to upset me. And although I'm feeling that, but I'm sure that was not her intent. You know, let's look at her perspective of this and maybe she was busy and assume positive intentions. And it, I think we did have a decent conversation because part of my point is personally, I would much rather take a separate trip and just be able to spend time than to be not even be able to talk and to be at a big function. That's always my preference is to have one-on-one time and make a trip than to go to 
something where you have little availability to have quality time. But that's right. just me. That's my perspective. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's right. It's how I feel. <laughs> can go either way. Depends on who you're talking to, right? Yes. Um, all right. So what we've learned in this is the first thing you say is not, I'm sorry, please forgive me. That should be one of the last things you say. You have to go through all the steps. Uh, I guess the question would be, what's the real in this and what's the ideal? I think we could probably dig into that for a couple of minutes. I think the real is you really need to, on both sides, take a breath before you just jump to unity, you know, forgiveness and allow yourself, whether you're the one asking for forgiveness or receiving the apology to think through the steps before getting there. Was there an owning? What was wrong? How does it not happen again? You know, take the time to reflect and not just jump to let's do a group hug and move on because just yeah. the words aren't going to get you there. Right. To where you should be. I think... Yeah. I also think the real, what really caught my attention was this, you can heal without forgiving, which I just, I've never heard that before. And so you don't have to do your little unity hug and say, woo, all's good. You can say, I am moving on and I'm moving. I, I don't have to be in this relationship or whatever it is that's causing the pain. And if they're not going to own up, then you don't have to forgive. Like you don't have to force yourself to forgive. I think that's a huge light bulb moment for me. And I'm curious, I'm really curious though, of how it feels to be, to not forgive something. For the person not forgiving. Yeah. Well, if you want a good book, here's the third one I brought up. No, one yeah. wasn't a book. One was a newspaper article. Have you heard uh, Jeanette McCurdy? I'm glad my mom died. It was oh. one of the number one bestsellers of last year. It was her. She told it in humor somewhat. It was a very big mix of raw and humor. If you want a little bit of sweet and sour, but that's a very good term. Her mother was a narcissist who basically emotionally abused her. How about that? And physically because of eating disorders and putting her on diets when she was 11. But if you really read, if you, it takes you aback because we are, we got to have unity. How can you say that? You know, but after you read the book, she hasn't forgiven her mother. And I tell you, it's a tough road for her, but I think she, she would be, not be authentic to herself if she said she did uh, because she battles a lot of eating disorders and you know trauma from what had happened in her childhood uh, but it'd be a great example of that I would tell you I felt in her book and toward the end that maybe it gave her some life clarity of how to move forward without that forgiveness I I, I think she'd have more baggage if she would have said she forgave when she really didn't versus trying to keep put one foot forward right yeah yeah yeah. even Good. though the name that's, of the book would really get your attention I'm i know that's what i was like i'm going to visit my mom in a few weeks i'm like yeah i'm not going to bring this book with me <laughs> she'd be like amy what are you reading, <laughs> You're reading. well I'm not going to bring that book um so I was thinking when you were talking about that, the book I just read the if you tell with the, about the abuse, uh, and a whole family and one of the daughters has not forgiven. And when I was reading that, she's like, I've moved on, I've healed, I'm healthy. I'm raising healthy children, healthy family. And she's like, I have no contact with my parents and I, I'm not forgiving them because they created so much pain for me and my sisters. I can't forgive them. The other two have forgiven and have some contact, but at first that like, uh, 
is she okay? But then, you know, then I'm like, I think she's okay. She's, I hope she's okay. Yeah. I hope. Okay. You just hope everybody's okay. All right. So what's the ideal? If that's the real. I think the ideal is one thing I would say that by going through the forgiveness process and the right steps, hopefully the issue won't repeat itself, right? Back to the um, owning it, acknowledging it, the thoughtful steps and forgiveness would hopefully lead to not doing it again. Yeah. But history doesn't repeat itself. Right. The ideal, I'm going to quote Sandy Lane, is to own your shit. That's the ideal. <laughs> Just keep owning it mm -hmm. <laughs> and then do the repair work. And then do the repair work and not to expect forgiveness. Amen. <laughs> Cause I think that's where we all get, a lot of us get hung up is we expect our victims to forgive us. And we also so, think that if we, we forgive, if we apologize quickly and forgive quickly, it will make it go away quickly, but there's right. not a lot of truth to that. You have to go through the proper steps with, with being authentic and taking the time to understand what went wrong. Yeah. Which is that really good. Reminds me, that reminds me of our last episode, the messy middle. You got to go through the steps. That's the messy middle of the harm done to the forgiveness or not forgiveness, but the reparations. You got to get to the mess through the messy middle to get to that. Right on. Right on. All right. Well, Sandy, thank All you. Right. Until, next to you. Until next time. Bye bye. Bye.